Legenda V12 Drophead Coupe 1939. Of the half dozen patrician motor cars still remaining on the world market, none ever inherited such a rich patrimony of design as the 12 cylinder Legenda. It is a newborn car, unrelated to any yet on the road, here or on the continent. Such is the 12 cylinder Legenda, a car destined to rank from now on, among the greater names in motoring history. Legenda Press Release, August 1937. The motor car offered. According to information kindly supplied by the Honorable Registrar of the Legenda Club Mr. Arnold Davy, chassis number 14092 was first registered on June 12, 1939 to a Mr. A.C.W. Norman of Montague Street, London W1. A factory body drophead coupe built on the short, 10 feet 4 inches, wheelbase, its guarantee was issued three days later. Fitted like many of its siblings with a replacement sanctioned 2 engine under warranty, V12 151 being swapped for V12 59, MG 6768 was purchased by its second keeper, a mister with hair of chain place, London SW3 in November 1945. Looked after by Davis Motors of Staines until 1952, the same year that Mr. Davis, a former Legenda service manager, curtailed his role as the factory's semi-official maintenance depot for pre-war cars, the V12 subsequently migrated to Bogner Regis, Mr. Dewhurst, and Middleton-on-Sea, Mr. Sanderson, before being bought by the Hollinshead family who barn-stored it for 40 years. Still covered in protective wax when purchased by Alfred Hill MBE via our July 2006 Buxton auction, the Ligna soon found itself being completely disassembled down to the bare chassis for the first time since leaving the Staines factory. Stripped to a bare block, the engine was thoroughly overhauled with new parts including, crankshaft, conrods, forge pistons, camshafts, plus associated bearings, valves, valve springs, timing chains, bearings, pulleys and various skew gears etc. The clutch was renewed and the G10 4-speed manual gearbox rejuvenated with fresh bearings and sundry synchro hubs. The suspension was reconditioned with new bushes and attention paid to the torsion bars, rear leaf springs and dampers. The brake drums were overhauled with new linings and the back plates refurbished. A new wiring loom was installed and the fuel system gone through. Ancillaries such as the starter motor, dynamo, Ceramic seal water pump and carburetors were restored. Gaining a new crown wheel and pinion and differential bearings courtesy of LMB Racing, the Legenda had its radiator and wheels, hubs reconditioned by CPA Services and Richard Brothers respectively. Numerous photos on file also show the ash frame being repaired, remade and the aluminium bodywork restored to its ex works condition. Retrimed in dark blue leather with a matching mohair hood by J. Critch. The interior also gained a European walnut dashboard and door cappings. Following a bare metal respray, the original drophead coupe body had its bright work refinished by S&T Electroplate. Sadly, Mr. Hill died before MG 6768 had been properly run in or debugged. Thankfully, the vendors whose garage has hosted various important W.O. Bentleys. Bugattis and front-engined Grand Prix cars proved an ideal new owner. Discovering that a huge amount of man-hours and money had gone into the project, he set about fine-tuning the result. Thus, the ingenious mechanism which secures the door and two planes is fully functional, the disappearing rear luggage rack works as it should and literally every nut and bolt underneath has been checked and tightened as necessary. A seasoned racer. The vendor is a firm believer in preparation and even a cursory examination shows that the Legenda has been suitably gone through and set up. He has even added mesh guards to the underside of the wings to prevent stones flung up by the tires causing any damage. Starting readily upon inspection, idling happily and accelerating in a decidedly post-WW2 fashion, the V12 remains every bit as impressive as it must have done 80 odd years ago. Having covered a mere 400 miles or so since its comprehensive refurbishment, the Legenda still requires running in, with the brakes yet to bed and fully etc. The clutch-actuated chassis lubrication system has been supplanted by a series of grease nipples and the hydraulic inbuilt jacks disabled, though, various correct type jacks come with the car.
collectors have traditionally been wary of W. O. Bentley's masterpiece but we believe MG6768 to be among the very best examples available. Indeed, the seller's mechanic has told us that he is happy to continue servicing, maintaining the V12 for a new owner. Drawing on the expertise of Bishop Gra, LMB Racing and Mel Cranmer, the drophead coupe is a singularly imposing and impressive machine. Decidedly undervalued when compared to its Bugatti Type 57 and Mercedes-Benz 540K counterparts, the Lagunda is offered for sale with a continuation buff logbook, three files of invoices and numerous photographs. A jewel for any collection, we estimate that the guide price would be met or even exceeded if a mark specialist were to undertake a similarly exacting restoration today. Model Background in making an evaluation of the better British cars, the Legenda V12 certainly must be considered an excellent design and one that contributed to raising the state of the art, not forgetting, of course, that it probably should be considered W. O. Bentley's masterpiece. Road and Track, October 1978 The most technologically advanced motor car to come out of Britain pre-WW2, the Legenda V12 had few international peers. Bugatti's Type 57 may have boasted a similarly exotic overhead camshaft power plant but its chassis layout was positively archaic by comparison. Mercedes-Benz's 540K could match the British car's power output but only when its refinement-compromising supercharger was engaged, while Hispano Suiza's J12 needed over twice the cubic capacity to develop an extra 40 horsepower. A landmark design, the Lagunda will forever be notable as the world's first production car to feature an overhead camshaft V12 engine. Debuting in prototype guise at the October 1936 Olympia Motor Show, but not officially launched for another year, the Lagunda V12 was engineered by a crack team of ex Rolls Royce employees, including W. O. Bentley, Stuart Strislin, and Charles Sewell. A clean seat design that aimed to marry limousine refinement to sports car performance. It was based around a substantial cruciform braced box section chassis. Boasting sophisticated unequal length wishbone independent front suspension actuated via unusually long torsion bars and special shackle pins that helped obviate side thrust on its semi-elliptic rear leaf springs, the newcomer also incorporated a Marl steering box, Salisbury hypoid rear axle and Lockheed hydraulic drum brakes. Singularly advanced. The model's aero engine inspired 6T. V12 featured overhead camshafts, one per bank, twin SU carburetors, a combined duplex chain, gear-driven timing system and Lanchester-type vibration damper. Displacing 4480cc, 475mm x-stroke 84.5mm, the unit was quoted as developing 180 horsepower at 5,500 revolutions per minute. Available in 10 feet 4 inches, 11 feet 0 inches and 11 feet 6 inches wheelbase lengths, the Lagunda flagship was among the fastest cars of its generation. Though, the provision of a center change 4-speed manual gearbox, with synchro mesh on the top 3 ratios, and conventional pedal layout made it surprisingly easy to drive. Beguiled by in-house stylist Frank Feely's marvelous creations which seemed to capture the very spirit of the age, most customers opted for factory coachwork. Indeed, such was the flamboyance of Feely's designs, which looked as if they could have sprung from the drawing boards of Jacques Saatchik or Figoni and Velasky, that most external coach builders produced bodies with altogether more conservative lines. Some 80 years on and the market has shown a marked preference for factory coachwork, of the 190 Legenda V12S produced between 1938 and 1940, a mere 100 are thought to have survived to the present day, though, comparatively few of those still retained their original coachwork, 